Pastor Mike uh, comes up. Um, we're still working for a plan for Easter, working some, some things out. So just um, continue to check your Facebook and your email for what's going to be happening on Easter morning. Uh, also continue to pray for the health care workers, not only the health care workers that uh, are participants in this congregation, but also out in our community. Um, look for an invite from Beth Princiata. Um, they're going to start a, the Women's Monday Night Bible Study. So be looking at, for an email or Facebook for that, whether they do it uh, through YouTube or FaceTime or however they're going to do it. Look for that announcement. Also, continue to come on out Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. for Mike Hayes' uh, Bible study on dealing with stress and anxiety. Okay, that's 7 o'clock, and uh, look for that. The email will be going out again this week shortly. Thank you. Hey, I'd just like to welcome everybody here at Bible Baptist Church. You know, you know under the circumstances, we haven't been meeting, but... Um, but we're still trying to live stream and hopefully you guys get a chance to watch this. And uh, for the next couple of weeks, I want to preach a message on um, the hand of God. And um, back, way back, there was a song used to be sung by kids and different people, but it says, he's got the whole world in his hands. Most of us have probably heard that song. He's got the whole world in his hands. And I think sometimes there's a lot of truth to that particular song because we sometimes forget that God does have everything in his hands. And some of the things we forget in this life is we forget the sovereignty of God. And sometimes I think that we struggle with this as human beings thinking that we can control certain events and certain things that happen in this world. And we have to realize that God is sovereign over all things in history, throughout all of humanity, and throughout time, the past, the present, as well as the future. God is sovereign over all things. And I think this is one of the most important things we have to realize and understand in the Bible that God's sovereignty is constantly working through humanity and through history. God just doesn't stop. God just didn't put the world in and let us go to about our own devices. No, God is still actively involved in all of history, in all of time, and in all of humanity. God is working consistently, simultaneously, and constantly. He's constantly at work doing and fulfilling his good pleasure and his good will. So for the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about the hand of God. And so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the hand of God in creation, number one. Then we're going to look at the hand of God in correction, how God will correct us as his children, as his people. Then we're going to talk about the hand of God in compassion, and we're going to see how God's hand moves with compassion throughout history and throughout humanity. And then we're going to talk about, kind of strangely speaking, but we're going to talk about the hand of God in the whole coronavirus. We want to talk about the hand of God in the midst of this. And so many times, uh, a lot of times we think that God's hand has been removed. God has never removed his hand. God has never removed his hand from history of mankind. God has never removed his hand from the nation of Israel. God has never removed his hand from your life as an individual. God does not withdraw his hand from you. And we have to understand that God's hand is actively involved in all things throughout all of humanity. So the most important thing that we have to understand here is understanding what is, what is God's sovereignty. A lot of people may not have a good, clear definition of what sovereignty is, but sovereignty is the absolute power, the absolute role, rule over all things. When it talks about God's sovereignty, it means that he has absolute power control over all things throughout life. God is sovereign over all things. He controls all things. He moves all things. The Bible says in him, we live and we move and we literally have our being in him. So God is sovereign over all things. And sometimes we forget that and we think that we have power to do certain things. We think we have the ability. And you have to understand God is sovereign over all things. He's the one that allows things to take place throughout all of history. And I think that once we begin to get this resolved in our minds and our hearts, we can, we, our fears and our worries of the future, what's going to happen, will be extracted, okay? So God is sovereign over all things. Now, I want to give you somewhat of a definition of sovereignty. So if we would ask ourselves, what is sovereignty? 
Sovereignty can be defined as having supreme authority and control and power over all that has happened or that that has happened or that is happening or that will happen. Once again, so God has power over everything that has already happened. That's the past. God has power and control and sovereignty over everything that is happening right now. And God has power and control over every event that will happen in the future. So God is sovereign over in the past. He's sovereign in the present and he's sovereign in the future. Okay. And so when we deal with this thing, how Christians do define sovereignty is as the rule of the universe. God has absolute rule over the universe. God having the right and the authority and the power to govern all that happens or that will happen or that has already happened. Okay. Being in accordance to his divine will. So God is working all things together after the counsel of his own will. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11 says that he's working all of humanity and all of these events are to fulfill God's purpose and God's plan. See, so mankind really has very little to do what is going on. Does man have his own free will? Yes, but you have to understand something. Man's equal, even on his own free will acts in a divine accordance to God's will and to what God is purposing and to what God is planning, okay? So we have to understand these concepts and how God really works in his sovereignty. He, he's working his purpose He's, uh, and he has, he has the power to bring about circumstances that will dictate whether he will to, what he wills to come to pass. He, will, he has complete control over everything and there is nothing that is done that, or that will be done that will not be allowed by God himself through his sovereign will, okay? So Paul expresses this in Romans chapter eight and verse 28. It says that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, who are called according to his purpose. And so we have to kind of come to terms with this on how God is sovereign over all things. So as I was studying this week and having in the back of my mind all that the world is going through and the coronavirus and everything that we're seeing in the world, different continents, different countries, and the death that is rampant and all the fears and all these things that are taking place throughout the world. As I was reading in the book of Isaiah, the Lord, I really believe the Lord brought me to a couple of different portions of scripture here. And one of them is in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 24. It says, the Lord of hosts has sworn saying, surely as I have thought, listen, so look at this, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Once again, let me read that again. Those of you who are looking on with us, please do. We encourage you to do that. The Lord has sworn saying, surely as I have thought, as God has thought it, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. You see, God's purposes have to stand, and they have to be fulfilled. Let me give you an example. There was a point in the Bible when Jesus was speaking about going to the cross, and the disciples really didn't understand that, and Jesus says to them, the scriptures must be fulfilled. So we have the Bible in front of us, and there are events they have to be fulfilled. And in order for these events to be fulfilled, God has to move history and he has to move humanity and he has to do what he's doing. And so God is actively involved working all things together after the counsel of his own will. God is systematically, simultaneously involved in every event throughout every event of human history in your personal life and in the major events around this world, God is constantly at work. God never ceases. The, the Bible talks about him. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't take a nap. No, God is consistently, simultaneously, and constantly involved in every event of all of humanity in history. So when we're dealing with all these different events, we see the virus, we see all these things happening in our country. Listen, the scriptures have to be fulfilled. These, these um, things that are happening have to take place in order for God to do what he's going to do in his sovereign will in working all things together after the counsel of his own will.
Okay? So we have to understand this. So the same portion of scripture, Isaiah chapter 14, and I want us to look at verse 26 and 27 now. Okay? Verse 26 and 27 pertaining to what is happening right now in the world. Okay? This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. Do you understand that? God says, this is the purpose. What I'm doing with this virus and what I'm doing in the world right now, God says, this is the purpose. This is what he's doing. Okay? This is the purpose that is purposed among the whole earth. And this, now here we go, is the hand that is stretched out upon all nations. Now, the series that I'm doing, it's going to be in a two-part, maybe three-part series, but we're talking about the hand of God. And God says here, look at it, it says that this, that the, this, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. So God has literally stretched out his hand upon all nations. This is the will of God. This is what God is doing. I had told you, I think it was last week, some, 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 some guy was trying to say that the coronavirus was, was from the devil and, and all this nonsense. Listen, God is so sovereign over the devil himself. God has absolute power, absolute control over all things. Okay? We have to understand that. Now, let's, let's look at it says here in this portion of scripture again. Okay? Uh, this is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon the nations. Now listen, verse 27, for the Lord of hosts hath purpose, and who shall disannul it? Nobody. Once God says this is going to happen, once God has put his plan and his will into perfection, into, into purpose, nothing is going to come against it. Nothing is going to change it. Now listen, and his hand once again, is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? Nobody. Once God has stretched out his hand, once God is doing something in his will, and he's doing something according to his plan, and his plan and his will, nobody can put their hand to come against it. And so, I want you to really try to retain those portions of scripture in the back of your head. But if there's another scripture I want us to look at, and that's in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 35. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. How do you like that? <laughs> and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he does according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay, listen, his hand, or say unto him, what does thou? <laughs> what are you doing, God? You see, what we have to come to terms with in everything that you face in your personal life, everything that you're dealing with as you watch the news and see what's going on in this world, you have to come to terms that God is sovereign over everything that he controls all things and that he is working all things together after the counsel of his own will. This is what God is doing. And so I think a lot of times we battle with these things and we struggle not realizing that God is in control. And I think that's where our fears and our worries and our stress and our anxiety can creep in is because we think that we have power, we think we have control and we lose sight that just like that old song says, that he has the whole world in his hands. I want you to look at the book of Job chapter 12 and verse 9. Job chapter 12 and verse 9. And as we're dealing with the hand of God. And so Job chapter 12 and verse 9 and 10. Who knoweth not all, the, all these that the hand of the Lord has wrought this? Now understand what's happening here in Job's life. Job is going through tremendous struggles and adversity and trials in his life. He, he had lost his children. He had lost his livestock. This man had lost everything in his life. And then it goes on, who, hath no, who, hath, who, uh, who knoweth not in all this that the hand of the Lord has wrought this? In whose hand, listen to this, is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. Now think about that. 
Job is making this expression. He says, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing? Everything is in God's hands. All right? And the breath of all of mankind. See, every living thing, whether it's, it's a plant, whether it's an animal, whether no matter what it is, an insect, everything is in the hand of God. And the breath of all of mankind. You know what that means? The breath of all of mankind is in God's hands. That means that God is controlling our life. The breath of all mankind is in his hand. I want you to look at Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. And it says here, Deuteronomy 32 and verse 39. See now that I even, I am he, God is speaking, and there is no God with me. Now listen to what God says. God says, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Once again, God says here, see now that I, even I am he. There is, there is no God with me. There's no other gods in this world. There is no Buddhist and Zen and Confucius. There, there are no other gods. There's one God. I am the Lord your God, and there is none else besides me. And God says, now look at this, I kill. God has the power to take life. He says, I kill and I make alive. He can kill and he can give life. He says, I wound and I heal. There is, look at, there is that, there is there any that can deliver out of my hand? Absolutely not. So this morning I wanna to talk to you about the hand of God. So the first aspect we're going to deal with this is we're trying to oversee the sovereignty of God. Because if you can understand God's sovereignty over everything that's happening in the world right now, it will lay you at ease and it will put you at rest. If you can understand God's sovereignty in your personal life, in the accounts, in the events, in the things that you're facing, if you can understand that God is sovereign over those events in your life, you have to understand it'll help you to cope with what you have to cope with and it'll help you to deal with what you have to deal with. And so understanding God's sovereignty is an absolute essential in the life of a Christian because if you never understand God's sovereignty in your life as a Christian, if you never understand God's sovereignty in your life in the world, if you can't come to a resolution of God's sovereignty, let me tell you something, fears and worries and doubts and confusion will hit you. And it'll hit you really hard because you're going to be worried about this. You're going to be worried about that. You're going to have fears about the future. If you turn on that news and you begin to watch the news, anxiety will creep in and distress and worry. Why? Because you don't understand that God is sovereign over all things and that he's working all things together after the counsel of his own will. And that all things are working together for good to them that love God who are called according to his purpose. So we have to come to terms with these things in a reality that God is sovereign over all things. Don't ever lose sight of God's sovereignty, his majesty, and his power, and his providence in your life or in what is happening in the world. So in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, and verse 11, we're going to talk about God's hand, okay, in creation. So we have to understand, well, what did God create? Well, God created all things. There isn't anything that God did not create. And we're going to talk about this as we get a little bit further into this particular topic, the hand, God's hand in creation, because it's very important that you understand that. Because when God created the world, he just didn't spin the world and let us go to about our own devices. No, 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 no. God is still actively involved and has always been actively involved in the past. He's actively involved in the present and he's actively involved in the future. God is systematically, simultaneously working things together according to the counsel of his own will. So that is God's sovereign power throughout our lives, okay? So the hand of God in creation. Well, God created all things. It was God who created all things, okay? And God, in the beginning, God said, let us make man in our image. Well, who is God speaking to? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, okay? So in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 11, 
Isaiah 45, verse 11. The Lord is speaking here once again. Isaiah 45, and verse 11. And it says here, Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, His Maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Now listen to this. Command ye, I command ye me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I have, I even my hands have stretched out the heavens and all the host have I commanded. Now you have to understand, God stretched out his hand and he created all the host. That means the sun, the stars, the moon. God created all things, all things. When we think about the planets and we think about the vastness of this universe, you have to understand the vastness of this universe, that is all done by the sovereignty of God and the power of God. I think sometimes we have a tendency to kind of limit God and we try to fit God into our finite mind. Listen, you cannot fit God into your finite mind. You cannot squeeze God into your way of thinking. God is far beyond us and he is sovereign over all things. And so God is his hand in creation. Okay, I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 48, verse 12. Isaiah 48 and verse 12. Isaiah 48, verse 12. Hearken unto, unto me, O Jacob, in Israel. My call, I am he. And listen, I am the first. I also am the last. He's the Alpha, the Omega, in the beginning and the end. I also am the last. And then he says, my hand also has laid the foundation of the earth and my right hand hath, listen, hath, hand has spanned the heavens when I call unto them, they stand up together. Whoa. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God and the Bible says and all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So we have to understand that God's hand is actively involved in all of creation in the past, as well as it is in the present and it is in the future as well. And so I want you to understand, I want you to look at this. Go to the book of Psalms, chapter 102 and verse 25. Psalm 102, verse 25. And it says here, David writes, Of old thou hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. The heavens are the work of thy hands. That's what you have done, God. Look at Psalm 148, verses 1 through 5. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise ye him, the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all the hosts, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise ye him, all stars of light. Praise ye him. The heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. God's created all things. I don't have time to go back through that whole Psalm 148. But what you have there is you have, look at verse 1 really quick. Praise ye the Lord. Uh, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise ye him from heights. Praise ye him. Here you go. Angels, praise ye him, all hosts. Those are the angels and the seraphims and the cherubims and all of those hosts of heaven. God created them. He says, praise ye him, sun and moon. There's the second heaven. Praise ye him, sun and moon, all ye stars of lights. Praise ye him, heaven of heavens and, and, and ye waters which be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Look at Psalm 95, verse 3. Not Psalm 95, verse 3 through 5. For the Lord is great God, he is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the, are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is, all, uh, is his also. The sea is his and he made it and he has formed, listen to this, and his hand has formed the dry land, the hand of God in creation. Psalm 119, verse 73, thy hands have made me 
and fashion me. Give me understanding and that I may learn thy commandments. David says, Lord, your hands have made me. Your hands have fashioned me. The Bible says, and God took man and he formed him out of the dust of the ground. And then God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. And the Bible says, man became a living soul. See, God is actively involved in creation. In John chapter 1, verse 3, I already quoted it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was the life, and the life was the light of men. In the book of Isaiah 45, and verse 7, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God besides me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form light, and listen, and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all things. God says he makes peace and he creates evil. He made darkness and he created light. You say, wait a second, Pastor Mike. Did you say God created evil? That's what he said in his word. God creates evil. A lot of us will struggle with that. I say, well, why would God create evil? He creates evil for his own purpose and for his own will. Because he is sovereign over all things. Stay with me. Keep that in the back of your mind that God creates evil. Listen to this. Go to the book of Colossians chapter 1 in verse 16. Colossians 1, 16 and 17. For by him were all things created. See, see that? For by him were all things created. We just seen that he creates evil, right? For by him all things were created. God created evil for his purpose and for his glory. That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible, stay with me, or invisible. So God created the visible world, but he also created the invisible world. There is an invisible world that the human eye cannot see, okay? The Apostle Paul says, we don't look at the things that are seen, but we look at the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen, the visible world is temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal, the invisible world. God created the visible world, the things that can be seen, and he also created the invisible world. Now listen to this. This is what he created. Okay, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. He created the invisible and the visible world, whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Now when you deal with those principalities and powers, a cross-reference to Ephesians chapter 6, you are dealing with the satanic realm. The principalities and powers. And it says, all things, the satanic realm, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now think about that. I mean, it says, I am the Lord, I create what? Evil. He creates good, he creates evil. And it says here, that he created the dominions and the principalities in the satanic realm for his own glory and for his own purpose. See, God in his sovereign will, he created Satan. Satan is a created being. Those fallen angels are created to fulfill God's plan and to fulfill God's purpose. Sometimes we lose sight of that. Sometimes we know, oh yeah, we know Satan's a god of this world and he goes around as a roaring lion seeking and may devour. We understand all that. But don't you ever lose sight that God created Satan for his purpose, for his glory, to fulfill his plan for redemption and salvation and to reveal himself to humanity. That's what God has done. Listen to this verse one more time. Colossians 1, 16 through 17. For by him were all things created. Say that. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Now listen to this. Whether they're visible or invisible, whether they can be seen or they're unseen, whether they be thrones or dominions, kingdoms and powers and nations, 
or principalities, evil demonic spirits, all powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. All things are held together. Time is held together by God. Your life is held together by God. The protons, the neutrons, the electrons are all held together by God. All of history, all of humanity is all held together by God. Every event in this world is held together by a sovereign God who knows all things and who's working all things together for the counsel of his own will. I want you to look at Ezekiel and help us to understand this a little bit deeper. How we seen that God created evil, did he not? We seen that he created principalities and powers. Did we not just see that? Look at Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 13. Ezekiel 28 and verse 13. This is a reference to Satan himself before his fall. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. This is Satan. The sarcasm, the topaz, the diamond, the burial, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, and, the, uh, and, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablets, tablets, and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Satan is a created being. Okay? He's a created being. You say, well, why did God create him if he knew he was going to rebel? It's all part of God's plan. It's all part of God's purpose. It's all part of God's will. In the day that thou was created. Listen to this. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. He was the over one or the overseer. The number one cherub. I have set thee so thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in, the, in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Once again, God has reminded Satan that you were a created being. I am the Lord your God. I create good and I create evil. Till iniquity was found in me. See, God is sovereign over all of creation. The hand of God, God has created all things. And he's made all things for his purpose, for his glory, and for his will. Everything that's happening in this world right now, it's all part of God's plan. It's all part of what God is doing. God is at work through creation and through the coronavirus itself. See, sometimes we think, well, God wouldn't do such a thing. Yes, he would. I don't have time to take you through back through the Bible and show you how God smote different people with, with uh, pestilence, with curse, with disease, with sickness, with illness, with all type of type of physical things. God has always worked through those events. I want you to turn to the book of Amos. The book of Amos. The book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 6. Amos writes, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord has not done it? Shall a trumpet be blown in a city and the people shall not be afraid? The trumpet was a, a sound of warning that the enemy was coming. It was a warning. The cavalry used as that trumpet a warning. It was always a warning. Now listen to this. Shall there be evil in a city? And the Lord has not done it. Is there going to be evil in the city? And the Lord didn't do it? See, God did. What's happening in Massachusetts right now? God did it. What's happening in New York right now? God did it. What's happening in the United States, California right now? God did it. 
what's happening in the world right now, Italy, Spain, England, China, God did it. God does all things. He's working all things together for the counsel of his will, for his purpose, for his glory. Let's bow our heads for the prayer. Lord, we thank you and praise you for who you are. We thank you for your goodness and your grace, Lord, in Christ's name.